ICON PSC was established in 1990 by two Irish doctors, Ronan Lamb and John Climax. Initially with a staff of five, ICON PLC has grown to a colossal 10,300 employees in 25 years. ICON is a global multinational firm with offices on every continent. ICON PLC provides a suite of services ranging from pre-clinical, early stage clinical development to consulting, resourcing, imaging, medical devices and adaptive trials. In Ireland, ICON's PLC's headquarters are based in Dublin and Firecrest, a subsidiary of ICON, is located in Limerick. Founded in 2001 and acquired by ICON in 2011, Firecrest delivers an innovative suite of training, performance support and study management tools which can significantly improve the compliance, consistency and execution of all study related activities at all sites and by all study personnel. Julie McGorty is an instructional designer in Firecrest. Before learning more about Julie's background, her role and the document production process, it is important to know what being an instructional designer means. CyberWorks highlights that instructional design is a systematic instructional needs assessment, development, evaluation, implementation and maintenance of materials and programmes. And it is this function that we are going to look at today. Julie's role is to create content and more specifically, the protocol overview within more typically the pharma sector. Theorists have proposed that there are many qualities and skills of an instructional designer. For example, Papas has identified that some of the qualities include being a communicator, a designer, a guide, an explorer, a project manager. Gadapelli has identified five qualities of an instructional designer. They include creativity, an eye for detail, a problem solver, being able to visualize material and the ability to write. So instructional designers need to come up with creative ideas for presenting content, design, engaging interactivities and devise strategies that motivate and enhance the learning experience. Concerning Gadipelli's eye for detail quality, it is very important for an ID to have an eye for detail. IDs should be capable of identifying and choosing relevant information and deciding the best way to deliver a good learning experience. The third quality is problem solving. This is a skill that is required in most fields and also applies to an instructional designer. Instructional designers need to meet the demands of all stakeholders. Fourth quality, visualising ability. A good visualiser can help learners retain information through visual clues, apart from adding value to the instruction. And finally, Gadipelli's fifth quality is the writing ability. Instructional designers need to be able to provide a structure that conveys thoughts or ideas coherently. Based on the instructional strategy, the writing style or the tone needs to be changed. So this video will highlight the qualities of Julie in her role as an instructional designer. So who is Julie McGorty? Julie comes from a family that's always had a love of reading. Her father is a retired academic and one of her siblings is involved in pure, but as she says, he is involved in a more different form of writing, more spin. Julie completed her undergraduate in equine science in UL and also a master's in interactive media in 2006. Within the master's, Julie found the visual end very interesting, using everything to communicate a particular theme or style, as she says. Julie has had a number of roles in the past, and you can see that in this pictogram, showing the various roles that she's had since she's graduated to uh, 2014 in her new role in Firecrest. And all have been associated with writing and some form of technical communication. 
Julie is involved in the production of the protocol overview and its associated materials and resources from start to finish. She has to establish goals and needs to understand who the learners are that she is writing and designing for. Julie's background has greatly influenced her ability to perform her role today. As she says herself, The I got um, as an undergrad in science writing um, was very specific. Uh, you'd have to review articles or you'd have to submit projects, but they were very clear on the level that they required and the style of writing you'd have to use and, you know, sticking to facts and only um, only applying what was fact, not assumptions. Um, that was a very, very strong foundation in technical writing and it has definitely stood to me in all the years. Um, you know, the ability to be able to deliver uh, an academic paper, um, I, I think that was that was as formal a, of a training as I would have received. So I wouldn't necessarily have a qualification in technical writing, but I think that training actually was as much as I needed to get started in, yes. in the area. So how do tasks emerge in Firecrest? Initially, the sales department goes out and makes a sale. Once a sale is made, the details of the clinical trial, the protocol, is given to the scheduler. The scheduler determines which person or team is available and then liaises with the project manager appointed to that protocol. The project manager is in a client-facing role, so is the lead point of contact with the client and the project team lead. The project team lead provides the ID with the protocol and the ID is part of the protocol overview development from start to finish. As Julie says, we design the protocol overview and not the entire protocol. Julie did highlight that as an ID, there are at least two layers of management above her, both who are IDs. A similar structure is applied to the other team members. She says, Once the PTL has notification who the team are for writing the protocol overview, the protocol is given to the ID and the appointed SME. The SME, who is a subject matter expert, highlights the key elements of the protocol that are deemed important. This is then given to the ID. The ID spends up to three and a half days scripting the protocol and converts it into a more meaningful graphical format. This is then sent to the graphics team, who has the content for about a day. The whole team, comprised of the ID, the SME, graphics, and where necessary, members of the multimedia team, meet and storyboard it based on five topics. Those topics include the study design, the subject selection, drugs handling and administration, study procedure and administration and assessment topics. When storyboarding is complete, on-screen reviews happen and edits occur, and this can happen a number of times. It then goes to the client for review. More edits may occur before going live. The output at the end of the document production process has to be exactly technically accurate. As Julie says, there can be no ambiguity, no error and no vagueness. Even though they are producing only an overview, it has become practice that most clinical trial investigators view the training material that Firecrest delivers as more beneficial rather than reading the protocol. Julie reflected on the industry she writes for, i.e. the pharma sector. She said it's very traditional, very rigid and very complex. It is open to litigation. Additionally, it is quite dated and everything is paperwork. However, technology in her role has enabled an audit trail to occur by having a digital trail. She also identified that technology has enabled the team to monitor the development process of the protocol overview through having an online registry system. She says that every change, every query, all has to be logged onto this online system. It's called Gyra. It's very time consuming. But as she says, every job has some form of administration and they have this. There have some, been some positives and negatives associated with having technology. 
and that's identified here on screen. Additionally, they use a variety of software in her role and her other team member's role. They use Excel, various browsers, graphics, etc. A benefit of technology for the client is that technology adds simplicity through speeding up the process and enabling them to find data. However, it has added some complexity because technology changes so fast and they have to be constantly innovating and they do need to improve and adapt their products, which they themselves have been slightly dated. They are considering introducing new technology. Julie was asked to provide some advice for a novice technical writer. Her key observations are broken into two. The first one is about the individual themselves. She said, you should try and find someone who you trust, who would listen to what you say. She suggested identifying a mentor. She said also self-development is important. Give yourself time to learn. Allow yourself the opportunity to develop. Next, Julie was asked for advice concerning software and her technology, and she advised as following. She said, definitely buy the book, Eat, Shoots and Leaves. Try and be open to change in technology. Just because it's used in a certain way doesn't mean that that's the only way to use it. There could be other methods. Try and find examples of projects online. Keep up to date and implement technology. See what works and what doesn't. Keep exploring and keep changing and be cognizant of the fact that what has been learned last year may actually be out of date this year. There are a number of concluding statements that can be made about this screencast. Firstly, the role of an ID is tough, demanding and requires both teamwork and individual work. Secondly, technology plays a vital part in the ID's role. Thirdly, the document production process in Firecrest performed by the ID is time consuming and has a very short time frame. When one examines Julie's qualities and skills outlined in the screencast, she very much fits in with what the theorists state. Therefore, to conclude, the role Julie performs appears to be a tough job. However, from Julie's enthusiasm and delight in talking about her role, it is one that is obviously very rewarding to her. I hope you've enjoyed the screencast. Thank you very much.